so good morning students uh, in the last class we have seen don gonzalo coming to the park having conversation with donna laura both of them fight over silly things and finally gonzalo settles down at one side of her bench because he could not find another place a bench all for himself and he is about to read a book we have also seen he has severe problem with his eyesight because he has put on his spectacles and he is holding a book in one hand and he has got another magnifying glass and he is adjusting that in order to read this is where we stopped in the previous class so now let us move on to the rest of the chapter so looking at gonzalo adjusting the glasses laura says i thought you were taking out a telescope so she is so amused to find him adjusting the glasses so she is commenting on that saying that is it a telescope so you don't need a telescope to read she is just commenting on the fact that his eyesight is so poor see that is expected because he is 70 he, today if you look at small children even a 3 year old child uh, may be having a glass to read but Laura wants to taunt him so she is making fun of him saying that you are using a telescope I think was that you? Gonzalo definitely did not like again the questioning because many times he had said we are strangers I don't want to speak to you so he's asking was that you? did you speak again? your sight must be keen so she's making fun of him again saying that I think you've got wonderful eyesight so keen that is why you don't need any uh, you know other apparatus to read what is there in the book keener than yours is so Gonzalo is so angry I know it is better than your eyesight. Keener than your eyesight. I know that. Yes, evidently. She is not ready to accept. So, she has got a sarcastic comment to it. Yes, I agree. Probably. Of the hares and patridges. So, he understood that she has not believed that. And he says, you know, you go and ask the hares and patridges. No. Hare, you know, it belongs to the family of rabbit. And Patridge is a small brown bird. As you can see here, it's a small brown bird. You know, it uh, throws light on the practice. During those times, uh, in Europe, most of these gentlemen had the habit of hunting. So when you go, these uh, hares and Patridges, if you need to shoot them, you need to have good eyesight as well. Because just one small movement is enough for them to fly or to run. So he says, you know, you ask the hares and partridges, these birds and rabbits, how many of them I have hunted. If I hunt them, that proves that I have got good eyesight. Huh? Do you hunt? So she is quite surprised and she says, oh you go for hunting. No, I should believe that too. I did and even now, I used to hunt. And even today I do that. So even now, there is a small pause there, you know, probably he has spoken so good of himself. So she is in a questioning attitude. She says, I used to hunt, even today. Oh yes, of course. Yes, I believed him. Yes, senora. Every Sunday, I take my gun and dog, you understand? And go to one of my estates near Aravaka and kill time. Senora, you should believe me. You know one thing, every Sunday I go for hunting and again I take my gun and dog. Again dog refers to the hunting dog. Usually these dogs would chase these animals and the masters would run behind, go behind them shooting. So he says I have a gun and I have my dog and I have uh, an estate near Aravaka. Aravaka is a place uh, slightly on the outskirts of Madrid. So he says I go to Aravaka. And usually I hunt. And you know why I go for hunting? To kill time. Since I have a lot of time at my disposal, I go for hunting. And now Laura says, yes, kill time. That's all you kill. Yes, I know very well. You go to kill time. And you don't kill any other creature. You kill only time. So she's not ready to accept what the old man says. Do you think so? I could show you a wild boar's head in my study. 
Lady, you have to believe me. I know you have not believed me, but you come to my home. I'll show you in my study. Study refers to the study room with library and all where you usually receive guests, where uh, you, you usually spend your time uh, uh, to work on something, reading, etc. Yes, you come to my study. There is the stuffed wild boar's head over there. And it was a practice during those times that if they thought good animals to hunt, if they could hunt a wild boar or a deer, they used to cut the head, stuff them and place on the walls. That showed everybody that the man of the house was a good hunter. So he says, you come to my home. There is a stuffed wild boar. Boar is a male pig and it's very difficult to hunt because these pigs are so uh, strong and they may attack you instead. Yes. And I could show you a tiger's skin in my bodo. B-O-U-D-O-I-R means the dressing room, the private room of a lady. Bodo. It is pronounced as bodo. It is the private room of a lady. He, and she says, you come to my home. What do you see there? In my dressing room, you would find the tiger skin displayed. What is that proof? I have displayed a tiger skinner, which means the tiger is hunted, the skin is peeled off, it is stuffed and it is placed over there. What does it mean? Does it mean that I have hunted a tiger? No. Someone else has hunted, probably my husband or somebody else and it is kept over there. Or I could buy a tiger skin and place it on the wall, keep it on the wall. That doesn't mean that I have hunted. She is indirectly saying that the wild boar's head in your study is not hunted by you. It could have been hunted by somebody else. Not ready to accept that this man was so strong and was a good hunter. Very well, Senora. Please allow me to read. Enough conversation. Again, the man was so tired speaking to her because she does not give him a chance to win over her. So he says, Senora, enough. Please let me read. I have taken the book to read. And you have started up all conversation with telescope and all those things making fun of me. Enough. I don't want more conversation. Well, you subside then. No issue. I won't speak. You have to stop first. So uh, Laura makes sure that the man always stops and though she is the one to start the conversation. Gonzalo. But first, I shall take a pinch of snuff. Takes out the snuff box. Will you have some? So now the man says, before I read, before I start reading, let me just clear my head. And he says, I will clear my head by taking a pinch of snuff. Now snuff is nothing but powdered tobacco. Now during those times, some people used to powder tobacco. They use it in pipe. To smoke at the same time you might have seen your grandparents uh, using this snuff box they'll have a small ornamental box they'll keep the powdered tobacco inside just one pinch you can take and closing one nostril they will just inhale the powder and that, uh, that clears their heads as you take it it clears your head so uh, he says let me first make myself comfortable let me relax by taking a pinch of snuff so as he takes out, anyhow the lady is sitting here, he just offers to her and says, Will you take some? Do you want? Donna Laura, if it is good, I will take. Only if it is good. No, I don't take this and that. I want quality stuff. And he says, It's of the finest. You will like it. No worries about it. This is one of the finest qualities that you would find. Definitely you will like. Laura, taking a pinch of snuff. It clears my head. So she takes a pinch, just keeps it on the nostril. And then she says, you know why I take snuff? It makes my head clear and I have a relaxed feeling. That's why I take it. See, this is the reason what, uh, the people say for smoking and drinking at times. Gonzalo, and mine. You know, I too take it for the same reason. Do you sneeze? So uh, generally after taking the snuff, people do sneeze. So, Laura asks, do you sneeze? Gonzalo, yes, senora, three times. Yes, I do sneeze, three times. So do I. What a coincidence. So, she says, even I do sneeze for three times. And she says, it's really a coincidence. So, now you would find that 
these two who were quarreling over small small things who had arguments over small issues have started speaking to each other in a very pleasant manner and all because of the snuff that he has offered after taking the snuff they await the sneezes both anxiously and sneeze alternately three times each so now uh, what they do is they both of them have their snuff they sneeze uh, and then gonzalo says there i feel better so gonzalo says lady now i am feeling much much better after taking a pinch of snuff so do i so laura says even i am also feeling better aside the snuff has made peace between us now aside is a dramatic device a theatrical device used um in order to speak to the audience directly see if a character has to say something to the audience the other characters on the stage will not know about it it could be a short comment it could be a speech if the character wants the audience to know about it they use this technique of the sign so the other character will not hear that so gonzalo does not hear what she says right now it is directly for us the audience the snuff has made peace between us you know we were quarreling with each other fighting with each other and now there is peace all because of snuff You will excuse me if I read aloud. So now, Gonzalo has got fine words for her. You remember how he greeted her? He said good morning with an angry glance at her. Now he is asking her. See, I want to read a little louder. Will you excuse me? Will I be disturbing you? Will it be a problem for you? Read as loud as you please. You will not disturb me. So now, see the reply of Flora. She says. No issue at all. I don't have any problem. You read as loud as you please. I'll be quiet listening to you, and it won't be a disturbance for me. Gonzalo, reading. All love is sad, but sad as it is, it is the best thing that we know. This is from Campomor. Now, Campomor is a Spanish realist. Uh, a spanish poet of 19th century so he reads out two lines from the book and it is all about love what campomor says in those two lines is that love is sad though it is a sad affair that is the best thing that you would ever find in the world you just think about romeo and juliet we you have already listened to professor tt thomas doing uh, the soliloquies of romeo and juliet they had a very sad love affair probably that is why even today all around the world romeo and juliet has been studied so much so campomor also says that he was a romantic poet as well initial uh, lines written by campomor initial points of campomor uh, was romantic in nature so he, he says all the love that you find in the world may end in a sad way but it really gives you the best feeling and see both of them are seven in their 70s always remember it not teenagers to enjoy the loud commentary still laura enjoys what campomor has written again here i would like uh, to remind you of shelly our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thoughts shelly has written he was a, an english romantic poet he says our sweetest song the most beautiful songs uh, we listen to we hear definitely speak of the saddest thoughts so love is sad but we should know that that gives us a lot of you uh, know nice feelings that's the best thing that we will know in this world now gonzalo the daughters of the mothers i loved once kiss me now as they would a graven image those lines i take it are in a humorous way so the continuation of those lines he says you know i loved lot many women during my young days and all of them are married all of them have children but they might have told their children a lot about me so today if their daughters see me they come and kiss me because i am their mother's lover once upon a time lover to their mother they would come and kiss me as if i am a graven image graven image means an idol so their mothers have spoken of me as an idol to them that is why they come and kiss me they do not hate me but they love me even today 
And now Gonzalez says, I think it's written in a humorous way. I take them so too. So Laura also laughs and says, I think this is also in a humorous way. So I think we can pause here uh, because the conversation continues uh, and now they have become friends. Earlier they were speaking to each other like enemies. Now the rivalry has come to an end. They are at peace with each other. They are comfortable in each other's presence and probably both of them love poetry. Both of them know about Campomore. Uh, and Gonzalo reads out, Laura enjoys adding on her commentary to that. So the next class we will see the rest of those lies and how this conversation, the conversation about Campomore takes them to a world in Marisela. Thank you.